Good morning everyone. So welcome to the next series of tutorials of JMeter and today we'll be touching upon JMeter's post processor. So as the name suggests, post processors are something that gonna work after your request has been executed. Uh, you can take it as something like if you want to extract something out of the response of your request so can so you can use post processors there. So today we'll be touching regular expression extractor as a JMeter pre post processor sorry. So let's go back to JMeter. So for this session we'll be recording a script and then you know trying to work out how we can use post processor in that. So for recording a script you right click on the workbench non-test element and test script recorder. So you can set the port number out here, for example, 7070 I'm setting it. I'll explain this test script recorder in details in the coming lectures. So target controller, you can use it at Workbench because this is where your recordings will be stored. I don't have any recording controller out here in my test plan. Or otherwise we can do it like this also. Add, you know, add thread group then thread group you can add a logic controller and that would be a recording controller and then you can use this workbench to store your recordings in test plan thread group and the recording controller I think this works good so I am starting my proxy server at 7070 port so when my browser configured with a manual proxy in the same port will hit any request it will be captured by JMeter. So let's go to my browser and you can check I'm using Mozilla in my case so whatever you are using Chrome maybe I or Safari so you can check the proxy settings by going to the network settings and see if you have manual proxy or automatic. So I just set it a manual proxy here with a port number of 7070 and localhost is there so this is perfect so now I can start recording my script so for this we are using this website that is newtours.demo.com so you can go to the we'll start from again let's open Mozilla demo art dot com you can configure your credentials here by just signing up as just as a normal process you do in any other website so I have already signed up so I'm using that credentials to log in here so I have logged in by the way you can also see that your recordings must be getting stored in this recording controller so once I log into this website so then I can do a sign off here so now when I'm done with my recording I can stop the recording controller and see what all requests have been recorded so this mercury sign on page this and then what is this empty one so this is the home page so let's start it from here and remove all the recordings that have been done before it so this is I mean it depends on what scenario you're testing and what requests you need you can keep those and remove the rest for example I don't need this I don't need this maybe I need this yeah login one okay so images black and all the others Maybe I'll keep the sign off then remove all others so you can remove by right clicking and remove recording controller so now if I add a listener out here so let's see how this request are getting executed and what response do we get from them so first this request has been executed then I'm expecting login to execute yes exactly then the sign off so let's see what it does request is made okay then for login request you can see 
login password action demo art and this is the request that is gone to the server okay and then is the sign off so now our scenario is if you see the response of this request you see that there is a set cookie ID that you have got from the response and when you see this request you see that the same cookie ID has gone with the request right so this cookie ID is dynamic so what we have to do is I'll just explain you the scenario so this response I will say R as a response say R1 I have to capture the response I mean capture the OCS ID from this response and I need to use it in this request along with the other parameters so this has to come here dynamically because this will change every time when I log in right so this is what post processor got to do we have to use regular expression extractor as our post processor to extract this value that is CSID and then put it in this request dynamically so that I can log in right so I have to put a post processor out here so to this request because I want to fetch the response of this so add post processor say a regular expression extractor right then how to write the regular expression now sampler result you go so you need OCS ID you can start from here say path for example this is the expression so you can copy here but this value I have to generate dynamically so you can use this bracket and then dot dot is at least one character would be there then you will use plus it states that it could be one or one or more so it will capture almost everything that you gonna you know that you want to capture in this request and you put question mark so this is the regular expression which you want to capture right so let me put this value as CSID so template is for example in a regular expression you have two dynamic variables that you want to capture so template number would be which variable you want to use for example in this case I want to use only one because I have one only so in case you have maybe more than one for example you could have something like this ABCD and then is equal to you want to capture something else here and if you want to capture this value so you can put the template as two so right now I want this as one only and I'll remove this all right so now is my login request which I have to param so I have to parameterize this OCS ID from the value I have captured out there so I need to pick it up from a variable so as we have already discussed in the previous chapters you can define variable as dollar start the braces so the variable name you have put is CSID CSID if I type it here yes so in case of regular expression for example if you just want to pick a variable this is this syntax is enough you can close the braces but I have also specified the template so the syntax for you know regular expression variable would be something like your variable name underscore template so V underscore T and how would you 
rename, I mean, how do you name your template? So we can see out here. So CSID underscore G1 because we wanted to use the first template, right? So I hope the scenario is clear. We are extracting the response of this request and capturing this variable and want to put the same variable in a login request. Right, so one thing you can also do is you can add a debug sampler that will give you what variable JMeter has captured. So you can add a listener also here to see the results. So now login you have provided this. So one more thing that we are missing right now is if I go to regular expression extractor, it, it asks me which fields I need to check. Body, body, body is a document. Response headers, request headers, URL, response code, and response message. So basically you can extract the values out from any of these. So when you see the response, so what we are doing in the current request is we are fetching it from response headers. So I need to select response header here. So I think that is all and we must expect a positive results now. So let's try to execute. So it will start executing from the top. So this is debug sampler and this is your response data. So you can see that this was what we used and we have fetched this out. This is the session ID that will be used in the second request. So we can go to the request there and I mean let's see the response. So this was the second one. So let's clear out the results to you know give you a better picture of how it works. So you can run it now. This is the first response out of which we have extracted the value and put it here. So when you go with it, so what you see as a request, your CSID is BAF46 and what you got from the response is BAF46. So yes, this has worked. So graphically, this response we have captured this value and this value we have used as a parameter in the next request. So this is the basic function of post processor. It will execute post your request. In whatever request you add this post processor, these processors will execute after that. So you have a couple of post processors which you can use depending upon, you know, how your response is. Maybe you're getting a JSON response or maybe something else. For example, if I show you right click post processor, you have at least seven, eight post processor. So we have just made use of this. For example, you're getting a response in JSON and you can also extract JSON value from here. Maybe jQuery, you can use it. CSS, right? So next tutorial, we'll be touching upon this XPath extractor. How we can use XPath to extract values dynamically. So thank you for today and hope to see you soon. Thank you.